Excellent work, boys. You done a mighty fine job getting all the supplies on board. You know where to take it. I've got some of my own business to take care of. Best to pay Clef a visit. See how he's getting along with the wee one. Your captain has returned. How's dinner coming along for the rest of the crew? Aye, Clef. I knew I could always count on you. It's a grand feast you made for the crew, especially considering the limited supplies. Fortunately, we gathered a few barrels of supplies on that there island. The kid was living off of them. So I hope it'll go a long way towards making the dinner prep a bit more exciting for you. How was the little scam? Give you any trouble? Where are they anyhow? Jankers, lass! That's the second time you startled me today. It's not real wise to give an old fella too many surprises now. But I suppose it's nice you're in high spirits. I take it Clef fed you while he was preparing. Aye, good man. Now, come along, lass. Got something to show you. Short walk to me chambers. No time for a question if you have one. Ah, of course, of course. Thing is, though, that's not just Clef. A lot of the crew be silent as monks taken a vow. The details be a bit dark for the ears of a wee one, but uh, I think I can cut out some of the nasty bits. You know that thing in your mouth what tastes things? Well, it's mighty important for talking, too. And a lot of the crew, they, uh, well, they don't got them no more. Saved them from some real bad folks, and they've followed me ever since. That's why it's unusually quiet on board me ship. And some good conversation's a bit hard to come by. I suppose that might be one of the little perks of having you around for a while. Hmm? Well, there's a few exceptions, aye. A few officers and two or three crewmen what man the crow's nest. Huh? What you looking for? Ha 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 Surely you're pulling me leg, lass. No? Okay, there's no crows on board the ship, lass. You see that little platform just above the main sail? We call it the crow's nest. We keep a lookout posted up there with spyglass. Their old job is to spot hazards, ships, lands, rough weather, or whatever else needs known about out there. Then he calls down to let us know so we can take action accordingly. <laughs> no, you can't have a go. Maybe one day, but it's no job for a wee lass what's never spent a day aboard a ship in their life. Got to be responsible up there. Not to mention all the climbing involved. Lots of safety risks in all that. As one of the few people who can speak aboard the ship, it's not a terrible suggestion you had. But I don't think you'll be on this ship long enough to build up the necessary experience. So my answer is no, lass. And that's final. Now, it's time we sort out where you'll be sleeping tonight. Step inside me chambers. Hey, back here. That's my bed. You'll be sleeping over there. No, lass, this ain't a joke. And before you ask, no, I ain't bullying you. I won't have you sleeping in hammocks with the crew. Something about the idea just don't seem right. And you sure as hell ain't taking a captain's bed from him. Nay, nee, lass. The boys said your bed would never fit in me chambers. And I want your bunk in some place close I can keep an eye on you. <sighs> Look. That bed belonged to me old Irish wolfhound. 
plenty big for you to sleep in. And I only gave the best to me late canine friend. God rest his poor soul. I spared no expense making sure me canine friend was comfortable. Good blanket and a pillow or two and it should be more than adequate. Look, I can see you ain't too keen on the idea, but believe it or not, lass, it doesn't come so easy to me to offer you the dog's bed. That thing's a precious memento of mine. I'd sleep in it myself and let you take my bed. But the fact of the matter is, you're the only one small enough to sleep in that thing. It's only ten days to Port Fardisto. I can find better bedding arrangements to bring on the ship once we arrive. One that'll fit in this room. Who knows? It might not be as bad as you think. Could you at least give it a shot? Good lass. I told you it was comfortable. That's bloody silk you're lying on. So can we agree you'll put up with this until we can find you something better? That's a relief. Get yourself comfortable. I'll be back in a minute with my dinner. We can talk a little more if you need before lights out. Fish stew, but I guess you already knew that if you fed you earlier. What kind of treat did he manage to put together for you, by the way? Boy, that clef. Never thought you'd be able to make that without butter. How was it? <laughs> That's our cook for you, lass. Best in the business. Can't wait to see what he can cook up tomorrow with the fruit from the island and whatever you had in those barrels. Figure we might as well bring them as they'll just go to waste without you there no more. Now, I'll be expecting you to earn your keep while you're aboard me ship. So you'd best be prepared to work hard and learn a few new things. It's a very different life out at sea. And it takes a lot of getting used to. So enjoy this first night at rest. Because it ain't always going to be so easy, lass. And with that, I've said me peace. You got any questions? Well, I expected you to ask something about your pa. How long this would take. Or what kind of work you'd be doing. I'll admit, wasn't expecting that one. Me dog was called Onlin, and he was the finest companion I ever had. Brave, loyal to the core, and a force to be reckoned with if anyone rose their cutlass at me. But he had a soft heart despite all that. I tell you, that dog single-handedly made the lot of us better people. Especially me. You're a bit young. So you might not have had one yet, but someday you'll have your moment, lass, where a mighty big decision stands in front of you, and you're gonna have a choice to make that'll change the course of your life for many years to come. The kind of thing that, for better or worse, will shape what kind of person you are. And that old hound saw me through two of those, Having those big, brown, tender eyes looking up into mine had me making the right choice for both of them. The first time, I suddenly knew there was a line not to cross in terms of what you'll do. Even if I am a criminal of the ICs, 
I don't mind if a bit of money changes hands. Taking a few goods what don't belong to me, but... Some things ought never to be done, no matter how much gold glitters in your eyes. The second... Well, most of me crew wouldn't be here if not for him. Twice over, in fact. Onlin gave me the courage to rescue those young men in the first place. Now I have a crew that would follow me into the depths of hell if it came to it. As for the other time he saved this crew, well... Out on the high seas, the dangers of weather, scurvy, and other pirates are only a few of the challenges you face. And sometimes, you'll have to do some really hard things to survive. In the days that I had to part with Onland the Irreplaceable, we faced the harrowing plight of famine. Now I'd have cut dead any crewmate who dared suggest it. But tragic as it was, old Onland chose a miracle of a time to pass away from old age. I, uh... I'd rather not get into the details there. But I'm sure you're old enough to fill in the blanks on your own. Thanks to Onlin, we made it with our senses intact long enough that when our prayers were answered and a merchant ship finally passed by, we still had enough sense not to attack and raid the ship like we usually would. We were in no state to win such a fight. But I know we'd have still tried if we'd been only one day more desperate. Starvation can make you do some mighty stupid things, lass. Instead, well, that was one of the few times I traded honestly with a merchant vessel instead of robbing them. We handed over much of our booty in exchange for food with humble tears of gratitude let them be on their way. It's what Onlin would have wanted. I tell you, lass, that dog was me very conscience for many years. I only ended up growing me own as a way to honor his memory. So you'll best thank the dog whose bed you're resting in tonight, because he's why I'm a good enough man to have taken you in. Now, give me a couple minutes of silence to finish this stew before it gets cold, I. Eh? Yeah, that really hit the spot, lass. Did you have any hand in making this earlier? Stir in the pot, huh? Guess he started you off a bit simple. I suppose it's not a bad idea to make sure your first day on board is a nice one, though. And he sure did his job keeping you busy while I gave the boys some orders. Now, I figure it's time for bed. The hour is getting late, and pirates rise early with the sun. So you try to get your rest now, because chances are I'll be waking you up a lot earlier than you're used to. I'll see you in the morning, lass. It's time I turn off this here lamp. What is it, lass? No, you can't sleep in the bed with me. Go back to your spot. Ah, blast it, don't you go getting all teary-eyed on me. <sighs> now you listen, and you listen good to me, I. This is the only time I let you do this. Now get in. If you wriggle about or kick me, so help me make it hard to sleep in any way. I'm kicking you right out, understand? 
The things I'm doing for your sake, Brando. We ain't cut off with this parenting thing. Ten days to Port Forest. And I can start work on finding them. Get the kid back where she belongs. <laughs>